Live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain, it's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here for the end of day two wrap up. This is theCUBE, live in Barcelona for HP Discover 2014 European edition. Uh, Dave, uh, day two wrapped up pretty good. Keynote, Meg Whitman's back out there again. Again, the, th the, th the summary here at HP is very, very consistent. You have three major themes that Meg Whitman's drilling down and hitting like a drum beat time and time again. One, technology innovation is alive and well at HP. She's, she's not skipping a beat. She weaves in innovation, 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 sprinkled in some R&D, you know, disruption, but innovation. Number two, customer. Customers at the center of the value proposition. That is absolutely the HP story from, the, from their roots. Bill and Dave Packard, even through all the changes, customer-centric, three partners. She's hitting a consistent buzz, drum beat on that buzz, three notes, innovation, customers, partners. And the tone is kind of trickling down, and it's showtime, so it's very clear from her team and the execs that it's showtime, lights are on, the cloud is here, the cloud is a transformative uh, crisis, if you will, as Pat Gelsinger said on theCUBE, never waste a good crisis, cloud is it. They're banking on cloud, driving the big data bus and converged infrastructure. What's your take? Well, I think uh, the, I agree with you, the innovation, we're hearing that theme a lot. And the innovation is pinpointed, uh, I'll say. So basically HP's challenge is they got all these businesses and many of them are in decline and managed decline, but because HP's so customer focused, they're not just going to leave their customers in the lurch. So they have to focus innovation on those new hot areas like 3PAR, like uh, you know, the NFV, like the uh, uh, Helion Cloud, and those are the areas that, that are getting you know, the R&D benefit, they're getting the budgets, right? So that's sort of point number one. The other point I want to make about innovation is HP, I've said this, I've said this since 2010, it's the HP's got to get back to its roots, invent. And you're seeing that uh, in two forms. One is incremental improvements to existing product lines. Um, again, like the three power all flash array, right? Maybe it's a little bit more than incremental, but it's, it's focused on existing products. The second is big bets. This machine thing, John, is really interesting, and it's a, it's a big risky bet. I mean, I don't know if it's going to pay off. I have no idea. Um, it's a nice little flagship show pony it, they could bring it, out like Watson, IBM it does. It could so be the, the I think IBM's that's, Watson. You've right. got to have some eye candy. You've got to have some headroom, as we always say. And it's good. I, I, when, when Fink talks, I listen. I get more out of his keynotes than any of the others. Now there's a very high level messaging and you know Meg's good and Vecti's good and you know blah 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 but Fink gets up there, I learn a lot. I sit there, I take notes. No, he's a total geek, but the thing about Fink though is that he's open source centric and I think today we heard on theCUBE specifically and the clear message throughout the show is software, open source software is the ethos that's going to be powering the engine of sort of the, certainly the cloud group. But here's and the thing. that comes down from But here's the thing on, uh, on, on the machine. I don't think HP has any idea of the economics of this thing yet. I mean, they must have some internal idea, but I'm skeptical that the machine is going to be able to compete with um, Flash, right? Big part of the machine is, is Memristor. Uh, Flash has got such huge volumes. I just don't know. Well, if Dave, that's the market shifts fast. As you know, we've covered Gen 8, Gen 9, Moonshot. You know, some things you know can go off and just really take off like, a, like it's nobody's business. Look at the data care stuff well, happening out they, of the services group from zero to billions of dollars in revenue in two years. I mean, so that's blowing up in a big the, way. And the key to the machine, because the big question of the machine is what software is it going to run? So the key to the machine is HP, I think, talked about today, is developing a variant of Linux that will run on the machine, uh, and they're going to do an SDK to get developers. This is a big developer moment test for HP. And John, you've talked about this a lot. HP's need, and we talked to Young John's about this a couple, I don't know, shows ago, the need to build that developer community. Without a developer community, oh, yeah. I mean, the machine is a total failure. But, yeah, I mean, so, so what do they got to do there? So here's, here's, here's my uh, uh, observation and, and prescription maybe for some of the management there. Um, one is, 
HP is a great culture. I think, you know, with all the turmoil, all the stuff going on, it's always a sideshow. It's always laughable in some way. But deep down, good people work here. They have good culture. But they have to transform it to a new modern era, not only just on the product side and the um, technology side with open source. Social media is going to change how they do business with their customers. So this new style of IT, I buy that, I get that, it's a nice punchline, but we, they got to start doing new style of how to do business, right? And that means in, interacting with customers. So I think they seem very weak on this whole digital transformation, meaning I just don't see HP really nailing it with social media. I see engagement, I see talk about that, but there's always going to be customer web pages that they need to have, but they can, they can always have that. But now they got to do business in the crowd. They got to do business out with a peer review. We had the person on from uh, HP Software who said, people talk to their peers before they talk to the vendor. That's a new expectation by the user. So I think the companies that will be successful in this transformation need to have the social presence the community ecosystems that Steve Dykes was talking about that he, that's on his agenda. If they could do what Steve and the cloud group's doing with that community focus, I think then if they do that company wide, they'll be a winner. So community's not just for developers, it's now customers. So I think it's interesting how they parse that out. We'd be curious to get more information, but to me that is going to be table stakes and that's not the old lead gen, get them by the throat, give me your email address, I want to sell you something. A little bit different style now of business around social. That's something I, I'm not seeing a lot of with technology. Uh, they certainly got the autonomy stuff. I want to see more of that. So to me, if they move that quickly, they'll win. Yeah, well, they, you know, they got good command centers, good, good eye candy. It's just how to, how to really leverage social media in, in the business. Well, no, well I, saw, I saw signs, join the conversation. Like, what conversation? They had a hashtag. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I rest my case. Up in, use the hashtag. Yeah. I guess. Well, I but so, the new style of IT is a good tagline, you got to have it, but is there anybody doing old style of IT anymore or claiming they do old style? IBM's got cloud, big data, you know, security, mobile, uh, VMware's got an EMC, the third platform. Um, I mean, everybody's talking about, you know, these, these new trends. Well, the, I, mean, the key I, is, I look at Oracle, right? Oracle, well, we, I used to beat on Oracle all the time because I call them you know, the telco, extracting rents. They always had increasing their prices and finally customers revolted. I think SAP is another company that I see is struggling with large purchase prices. Anyone who has large costs of software, the old way of doing it is large license up front, large time for deployment. That trend is clearly pulling back and you're going to see, I want more like Royal Phillips, which is, I want license that's going to be buy as I grow, consumed by the drink, and that's cloud, okay. and I think that's the big okay. bet. So, so my reference model for all these discussions of new style of IT is Philips. Yep. I say, could they do business with Philips under the model that Alan Nance laid out? That's my yeah. new mental model. It's, it's the Nance's and, law. But here's the thing. Nance's law. It's it's Nance's like, law. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You know, Amazon's actually using the video saying, see? Okay, it was Amazon, Facebook, and, and Google yeah. invented the new style of IT. Let's, let's be honest about that. But, even not everyone can build their own IT. That's what they did. So. No, of course. But everybody's trying to mimic that style and they're looking for companies like HP to help. But here's the point about Oracle. Oracle can play in that new style of IT. They can go and say, yeah, sure, well, we have cloud, we have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Boom, 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 clean. Now, peel back the covers, it doesn't necessarily yeah. you know, all integrate with the apps. But there's a lot of integration there. So, I, I, as critical as we've been in Oracle, that, that that was a red herring at the Churchill Club. When Larry Ellison stood up and said, oh, cloud, water vapor, blah, blah, it was a red herring. He had clear plans to yeah, move to the cloud. Yeah, he was going to milk as long as he could, and right. he, he shifted, he's shifting over, but still. I don't see it as a flip. No, I don't see it as a flip. No, no, it's milk, I said he was milking it for oh, as long milking. as he yeah, could. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was, what, 2008 or nine, he had the Churchill Club yeah. video. We went to what, Oracle World, past five years? Really two years ago, he was just, Move to the cloud. This year, they just started shipping products. So, you know. Yeah, but they're I mean, breaking that out in their they're breaking it out in their financials very <laughs> clearly. IBM's got like a, two, a gazillion billion dollar business cloud business. They're like, all right, well, that's everything. Does Amazon services. break it out? Does Amazon? No, no. But but people break it out for them, and you know it's a subset of other. <laughs> okay, so so wait, carry, they're hiding carry, the ball. Carry the they? stupid. Amazon's hiding the ball. This is the point I'm making. Amazon's hiding the ball. IBM, you can't parse out what is and isn't in there. HP's not even really give multi-billion, that's all we know. Okay, multi-billion. For which company? Uh, uh, HP, okay. I, 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 I don't, yeah, which company? I don't know. IBM, and I don't so, know, HP. So this is why, I got to give Oracle props. They tell you exactly how much money they made in infrastructure service, platform as a service, software as a service. They break it out every quarter, give you compares. It's very clean, and 
I, I, give, I give them a lot of credit. They're serious about cloud. Okay, so I got to ask you about our afternoon. We had Mark Interante, Tom Norton, Steve Deitch, all from the cloud group. Big bulk and invest, big bulk investment in cloud. They built it out. They're going to scale it up this year. Um, they they have a great community model. They got good social media. They got a good team over there. What do you think their chances are this year? <clears throat> well, we like this term heavy lift, and HP's cloud has been one heavy lift. Um, <laughs> and and I think Steve Deitch summed it up. Is that look, our differentiation is. We want, you want on-prem, you want off-prem, you want public, you want private, you want hybrid. We got it all and we'll you know, stand up to the security and compliance edicts. My concern, John, is to me to compete with Amazon, you either have to have massive volume, like Google, or, and by the way, Google's not in the enterprise not competing with Amazon because... Well, they will know, soon. We'll see. Yeah, well, they have a lot of changes to make. They have to do what Amazon did to compete in the enterprise. We can come back and talk about that. <laughs> or you have to have a highly vertically, in, vertically integrated stack of differentiation like Oracle. And HP doesn't have the platform as a service and the, and the software as a yeah. service and the database layer so they can charge like ridiculous telco margins. So the margins. quote we heard from a customer, so, if I buy your gear, buy your, your service, uh, hardware and services, it's not worth anything when it doesn't work. So H, yes, so HP's ace in the hole is their customer relationships um, and you know the HP brand, right? But the, the business model is, in my opinion, is going to be a lower margin business model for their cloud than say an IBM or an Oracle. Uh, probably be higher margin than Amazon, but I don't know about that. I think Amazon over time could have a, a, a killer uh, cost model. So we had great interviews today. We had uh, a lot of storage, big data, cloud, good day. I'm meat encouraged. And, today was the meat and potatoes day of the queue. I'm encouraged about, um, I've always been encouraged about three par. Three par, like, you remember I call it the gift that keeps on giving? That, it keeps giving. Just read my mind. I mean, I tell you, IDC just came out with a report on uh, all flash arrays. EMC topped it, what a surprise. Remember I said EMC is going to be number one. Pure was number two. I think IBM was number three, all up there. NetApp was, you know, four, I think. In blah, shipments? Blah, blah. This is in revenue for all flash arrays. I think HP is going to do some damage in that space because I tried to prod Craig on it, but he wouldn't he wouldn't bite. No, they, HP's, their lips are sealed. HP's share of its on-platform business, I don't know what it is, but I bet you it's less than half Look at, of the total Look spend. At, you, you know. So John, they get they could kill it if they just sell to their own base. I know. And I think they're going to. I think they're going to. And I think the, the fact that their lips are sealed speaks volumes. So, yep. you know, I got the little smile like they just swallowed up the canaries. But so, like, to me, that is, I see that happening. So, to me, you know, no one's going to come on the queue saying, we got to see your weapon we're launching in about six months yeah. and tell you about it. So, um, I think the teaser for us with Nunez and uh, uh, David Scott was this extensible architecture. And I think David Scott was forthright in saying, look it, you know, we was, you know, we had built an extensible architecture that works in all the three areas that essentially is converged infrastructure. So, so that's that's going to be good. So that was great. Tomorrow we got a great lineup as well. We got uh, two celebrities in our mind. One, Antonio Neri, Cube alumni. We also have Martin Mikos tomorrow. We got Peter Evans, the new VP of Global Marketing. Um, and Paul Miller is coming on. We've got some great guests tomorrow. Another another heavy day. Um, Dave, let's not try to to uh, stay out too late tonight. Maybe get a good night's sleep. Barcelona. Sounds good to me. Get a bed by two. <laughs> Barcelona. Uh, we're live that. in Barcelona. It's the Cube. Wrapping up day two, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll see you tomorrow. Keep watching and thanks for watching.